Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at the formation of stars. So let's get started. Now, the first thing to note is that stars are formed in interstellar clouds when gravitational forces overcome thermal pressure and cause a molecular cloud to contract until the core becomes hot enough to sustain nuclear fusion. These fusion reactions then provide a thermal pressure outwards that balance the gravitational force inwards. At this point, the star is said to be in something called hydrostatic equilibrium. So in the picture here, we've got hydrostatic equilibrium, where the forces due to gravity are acting in towards the molecular cloud, and these forces are balanced by the forces out the way due to the internal pressure caused by nuclear fusion reactions. But before nuclear fusion takes place, the outward thermal pressure from the inside is not big enough to prevent the gravitational forces acting on all parts of the outside of the molecular cloud from contracting. And what actually happens during nuclear fusion to power these stars. Well, we looked at nuclear fusion in National 5 and higher level, but we didn't look at it in much detail. All we said is that nuclear fusion is when two lighter nuclei join together to produce a heavier nucleus with energy being released. It says here that our sun and stars of similar magnitude produce energy by converting hydrogen into helium by the process of nuclear fusion that termed the proton-proton chain. So this reaction is the one we're going to look at in more detail. This takes place at the centre of the sun, i.e. the core, where the temperature is about 15 million Kelvin with a density of 160,000 kilogram meters cubed, with the outer layers acting as an insulating blanket. The process can be thought of in three stages, and you need to be able to describe these three stages. So stage one involves two hydrogen nuclei, i.e. protons, shown here, which fuse together in the process ejecting a positron and neutrino, so there's our positron, there's our neutrino, to form a deuterium nucleus, which is hydrogen 2, consisting of a proton and neutron. And that is why the mass number for deuterium is 2, because it contains the proton and the neutron. So just to help you visualise this reaction for stage 1, we've got two protons, these green particles, which collide. So if we play this, so these collide to produce a proton, a neutron, a positron and a neutrino. Stage 2 is when the deuterium nucleus, i.e. this hydrogen 2, fuses with another proton, the hydrogen 1 here, to produce a light form of helium, helium 3, which is this one here, which has two protons and one neutron. A gamma ray is released at the same time. So just to help you visualise stage 2, we've got our proton and neutron here, our deuterium, and we've got our other single proton here. So these two fuse together and they form helium-3 with a gamma ray produced. Lastly, we have stage 3, and stage 3 is when two helium-3 atoms, here and here, fuse into a normal helium atom, which is helium-4, which has two protons and two neutrons, i.e. like an alpha particle. Two protons are also ejected, completing the process. So we get two protons released here, as well as helium-4, and these two protons can then go on and be involved in more stage 1s to create more nuclear fusion. So lastly, to visualise stage 3, we've got our helium-3 and our helium-3, and if we play this, the two fuse together to form helium-4 and two protons. So here's a summary of the three stages. So in stage 1 we get two protons combining to form deuterium. In stage 2 we get one proton combining with deuterium to form helium-3. And in stage 3 we get two helium-3 atoms fusing together to form helium-4. And that's the main aim from getting from hydrogen into helium for nuclear fusion. It then says that at each stage the reactions generate heat and light as a result of the conversion of mass into energy. So remember from higher physics that was Einstein's energy equivalence principle where he said that mass can be changed into energy, and energy can also be changed back into mass. And this is why we always said in our definition of nuclear fusion that energy is released. It then moves on to say that modern observations tell us that the sun converts around 4 million tonnes of its mass to energy each second. Even at this rate, however, its huge mass means its fuel will last for many billions of years to come. And now consider this, so two protons being positively charged will repel each other as they approach. If this is the case, how can nuclear fusion occur in the sun? Well, Forcing two protons close enough together so that they will fuse can only occur at extremely high temperature and pressure, capable of overcoming the internuclei repulsive electrostatic forces. Conditions in the core of the Sun meet the requirements of nuclear fusion with a temperature of around 15 million Kelvin and a pressure of 200 billion atmospheres. So there's a high enough temperature and high enough pressure for fusion to occur, and that's going to squeeze the two protons together to form the deuterium in stage 1. It then says that nuclear fusion is the focus of much applied research on Earth as a way of producing power, allowing our reliance on fossil fuels to be reduced. 
Progress has been slow because the engineering required to contain plasma at high temperatures and pressures is very challenging. You'll remember from National 5 and Higher Physics we call this plasma containment. And remember that plasma is hotter than any known material, so it's going to melt anything that it comes into contact with. So you need to contain the plasma to stop it from touching the insides of nuclear fusion reactors. And you do that by using powerful magnetic fields produced by strong magnets. And lastly, a fun fact is that the first stars formed after the Big Bang arose from clouds containing only hydrogen and helium, and the other elements arose as a result of nuclear fusion in these first stars. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.